Greetings RC fans, Sharky here and welcome back to Sharky's Garage for this, the start of episode 3 of the Little Blue Build. And a lot has happened. <laughs> a lot has happened off camera. Um, yesterday, Friday, I spent most of the day with um, Colin Villette, I hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, Colin, um, of the um, RC Misfit Scalers um, here in the UK. And Colin and I, uh, mainly Colin, me watching and knocking over all his uh, shrink wrap. Anyway, um, we got us to this point. Um, well, we got us to a running setup. I have now mounted the body and I have mounted the ESC. I need to mount the receiver. Um, there is the skid plates to go on. There is the bumper to go back on. We have two spare motors. Um, I'll explain that once I take it apart. Um, tires are also a thing that I'll bring up later on in the video, um, but it's currently running um, and I'm using a Flysky GT3B. So this is my first um, rig that is not running a individually dedicated um, controller. Um, and I must admit, I'm loving the control of this. Um, it, the Dumbo RC ones I've got are really good um, that are, came with my FTX and my RGT and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's just something about this, although it does take eight batteries, which is a bit of a, a bummer. So I'm going to stop this right now I'm going to connect this battery because one of the things about the ESC that I've got is it's not switched so it's basically when the battery is connected we have power when the battery is not connected we don't um, so I'm going to turn the receiver uh, the transmitter on plug the battery in and then I'm going to give you some running footage before that um, if you have um, not subscribed to the channel now be a good time to do it um, also don't forget to stick the notification bell on um, if you like the video, drop a like on it and also drop us something down in the comment section. I do love to hear from you. Right, it's all plugged in. Just need to watch it and need to set my endpoints up and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to pop it on the floor now and give you some running footage. So. I've got really good control. I need to change the centre of gravity, but that's flat out. So I may have to switch to one of the other two motors um, to see how that runs. I'll take it all apart and show you exactly what I've done. Um, let me put something down that it can climb over one sec. Right, these are not fixed down so we don't know how this is doing. This is my first test of crawling. And this log is massive. I don't know whether I'm going to have to, I'm going to come in front of the camera, hang on a second. Yeah, I'm going to have to hold that. That's far too fixed. just some bits I've had about the house that I wanted to run over. I'll just hold that there. Thank <laughs> you. 
<coughs> shouldn't, shouldn't have any issues with this. So that's going to be an issue there. I'm going to have to, excusing the um, groin in the top of the camera, because I need to hold it together. So, hopefully that'll give you some idea of the capability of it as it stands, and then we'll move on to pulling it apart, showing you what we've done. Right, starting under the bonnet, we've got the battery, which I'm about to disconnect. Um, the receiver is also tucked in here currently, that's gonna move. Uh, the um, ESC is fixed down, that's where it's gonna live. Um, so I just need to move this, and that's gonna go further back. Um, so I'll do that and then I will pull the body off, I'll disconnect the battery, pull the body off and um, show you what we've done underneath. Right, just before I pull the body off, I'll show you what we've got underneath. So um, we have got the um, chassis mounted steering servo. We have got one type of um, uh, drive shaft running to a center transfer box we have a different type of drive shaft wpl one running to the rear although this is a little bit wobbly i mean there's plenty of room let's see if i can hang on you see there there's plenty of room in it but it's just a little bit wobbly not too sure about that we'll see how that i might have to change that uh you can see at the back here you can see an exposed cog because um, I didn't have any uh, drive shafts with a big enough end to go straight onto the um, butt that came out of the end of the um, reduction gear in the 370 WPL motor. I'll show you more of that from the top. Um, we've got back plate in, um, which has been modified, and then the power wires run into the top. Right, I'll pull the body off and get back to you. So I've taken the mount screws out, but just showing you the back of the 370 um, can WPL with the reduction gear on there. Got a mounting point here. We've got a mounting point. Let's see if I can show it clearly. Here. And then on the front, we've got the last mounting point here. Um, Switch to longer screws, screwing from below because the two under the um, bonnet are hard to get to and because of using this aftermarket plate, it's basically <coughs> got a riser that you can screw top and bottom. So I thought doing it that way makes it easier. So I will just flip that over and there we go. So the Quick Run 1060 is mounted here. This needs moving, which I'll do in a minute. Um, the motor, we've got the lead coming up over the top here and to there. But I do have, thanks to um, conversations Colin and I had, two spare motors, wired up and ready to go. So we can just connect them in should we need to. This is another 370, exactly the same um, as the WPL one. And then I've got this one which I still need to put a flat spot on, I think. 
because I don't think we did that yesterday, which we are calling the Clarkson because it is super talky, super powerful. And oh my Lord, when we connected it up yesterday, it made this thing fly. It would be great for speed runs, but um, I really need to sort something out about um, the sort of mounting positions and such like to, to make that work. So yeah, um, so that's the Clarkson motor. Uh, they require a different drive shaft uh, with a large end which goes onto the transfer case here and then a small one that goes straight onto the spindle out of the front of the motor. Um, this one, because I didn't have um, one that um, had um, anything large enough to go onto that, that's why we've got the cog uh, out of the um, C34 transfer case on the front here to enable us to go from the very large output of the um, reduction gearbox down to one that we can run here. So we've got three different types of uh, drive shafts that we're running. And as I say, this one, you can see there is a bit flexy and I need to do something about that. So any tips on how to do that isn't there. Now, here's the clever bit. This is the remote mount that I bought that came with this kit. Uh, it was designed for WPL C14, but obviously we repurposed it. So we have mounted it here through to there. This one didn't quite line up um, when we got it done because of things and doesn't really matter. It's nice and secure, it's flat against there. So that's that there. Um, yeah. So that's everything we've got. I need to put the bumper back on. I need to put the side plates back on. I need to mount this, which I'm planning to do. There is an area. So it's hopefully getting the light right in here, which is where I'm going to mount the, the receiver um, and then put, poke the aerial through up into the cabin to give me that. This is the leftover switch because it was uh, switched underneath the... Um, through through the passenger side uh, i haven't taken that out i'll probably take that out when i'm taking this apart to do this this time um, and then i'll come back to you when all of that is mounted so just a short little piece this is where i have mounted the um, receiver i took the switch out that was mounted in here and i've poked that through the interior needs detail detailing um, I will speak to my brother, Kelton Raven, and get him to do that at some point. That probably won't be before the 5th of March, but it will get done at some point because it's got a really nice dash. And with his skill level, he can make that really look great and will have a really, really nice looking setup in there. Um, I love the fact that he's even got cup holders. So, yeah. Um, that's where we're at and now it's a case of doing the next bit so you just see, see there quickly that it is all back in there and all the rest of it and it should mean that I should be able to disconnect the cables um, while it's in situ um, so that I can disconnect the body and stuff like that next job so here I've showed you that we've set it up so we can hot swap the motors in. Um, I'm going to take this plate out and paint it. Um, it's one of the jobs I'm going to do and paint this um, so that that's all, you know, got that on. Um, so that's the next little thing that I am going to do and then get back to you. Just a little bit, doing some cable management. Um, so I'll cut these off in a second, but I've used cable ties to attach that side here, make sure it keeps that clear. Um, and then obviously we've got these two which are going to go to the um, receiver so I need to do something with those as well. So you can see there that that slides out nice and easily. Um, we're taking that out. There's one uh, grub screw in the top. Sorry, I should keep it this way on. Um, so that's the um, ESC end. You can see here that we did tap it but it doesn't quite line up because of some sort of mess up probably by me. Um, so this plate is coming out and gonna get painted. Um, that's the next job. Um, and as I say, this motor can be switched out for 
this one, which is the same as this one, or the Clarkson motor, which is so much more powerful, which would then move that forward to there, which definitely would give us more clearance under here. Um, as it is, it only just touches at full shock uh, compression at the minute, and that's only when it's in the middle. It doesn't on articulation. So um, yeah, that's that. So that's it. Little blue is done. Um, the only thing I need to decide is which tires I'm going to run. Now these ones came in. These got metal rims. I've painted them to same colour blue as the top because uh, they were scratched. And I think they look pretty sweet. They are slightly larger than that, so that is an option. The WPL ones. I might do the same with that as I've done with that with the um, with the paint, but I need to undercoat that one. Um, or we've got the Fae ones, which are a bit too hard. Anyway, putting those to one side. Right. Body is not mounted at the minute for a very good reason. I want to show you what's underneath. Take the body off. Put that over there. Right, here we go. So, side plates are back on. Uh, they've been painted. Mud flaps are on. So, Land Rover mud flaps, front and rear. Back plate has been painted. Okay. Still got a decent amount of travel on the back. Articulation. That's all in. Uh, we did talk about the cable management. That's done. Uh, the mounts are there. So that's it. Um, we've got the receiver mounted up there. I just need to plug that in. And then it'll be ready to run. So I'll put the body on and I'll show you it with the body fully mounted. All right. So little blue is fully buttoned up. We have got steering. We have got forward and backwards. So I will do a little bit of running footage on the floor, but this will be the last segment in here. Right, so. All done. He's catching the mud flaps a little bit, but I need to set the end points up. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the series and uh, the build videos, and I'll catch you all next time. Hey everyone, 
Hi, a uh, little bonus clip here. Um, it was the BERCC um, get together at the weekend uh, for Ian Sizer's birthday, uh, raising money for Great Ormond Street. Um, I took little blue out and I broke the body mounts. Um, so if you remember this front tray, I'd cut it out. Um, and what it did, it snapped these two posts off. So I have moved things around. This used to be mounted in there it's now all mounted on here um, so I've had to cut a little bit back in there to make room for it I've also put some screws in the top there through to hold that a bit better and um, this one pulled out but it should be okay uh, we're going to then mount through these four screw holes here into the body um, and that's all done the battery does fit in I've tested it um, so that's it quick update on little blue um, tires I'm going to look at in a minute uh, we tried running the others um, they're okay um, I'm going to potentially try taking these apart and taking the ones I had on here before apart because there's a bead locks to see whether I can stretch these over that to give us um, a different tire pattern um, because the rims are bigger on the other ones these have got smaller rims uh, bigger actual tire um, and we'll see how that works out in the similar way to they do with a lot of the crawlers um, running 2.2 rims with 1.9 tires that's what I'm going to try with this and see how that works out um, I may show you a little clip of that in a second or two So I've just taken this apart uh, using a 1.5 mil uh, hex. Um, took front part off, which has one of those which locates into here. We've got a third part that sits inside. It sits inside the foam, which is inside the tire. So I just wanted to show you that. So this is um, an aftermarket WPL wheel with these are the V4 tires with the foams that came out with the C54. Um, what I'm looking at is whether I stick with this foam or whether I put that in there to help that and try and get that onto these to see how that's going to be so I've put this one back together um, I tried it on there it didn't really work it didn't really look right didn't really sort it out um, didn't make any improvements so I'll just take both sets of tires with me I'll make a decision on the day on the fifth what I'm gonna run whether I'm gonna run these super soft ones um, or whether I'm gonna run these bit harder ones depending on the terrain that we're looking at and what sort of grip I need um, when we get up to Shieldon um, so that's it the only other thing I need to do is put a flat spot on the Clarkson motor and then I'm ready to go it's all sorted out and done the body's on see all in there let's turn that around into the light a little bit more um, so there's room around the uh, vent in there battery will sit in the top here not a problem uh, because of the hood uh, and it all it sits in the natural normal place uh, the receiver um, aerial sits just inside here inside the cabin the cabin will get detailed at some point it's just um, person who I would ask to paint it because I'd want the job done properly not much done by me is very busy working on another project now right now thank you very much Kelden Raven anyway that's it um, I hope you've enjoyed and this will be the last of the build stuff on this unless I absolutely destroy this at RC Adventure Shielden for the GCRC family competition I do have my class one sticker for this so just give me one second I'm going to put that on so this is my class one sticker um, which will go on and um, Sean has checked it over and confirmed that this is a class one rig. So there we go, class one, little blue sorted and class three, Mauler. 
you go.